So I'll briefly describe what is in computational probabilistic modeling. I start with the modeling. So model is simplification of nature. I have two examples from my own research. The first one is from the beginning of my career, uh, predicting concrete quality. Concrete is made of sand, water, cement, uh, possibly some additives. And we are interested in then the end quality, like workability, compressive strength, whether the bridge stays up. Um, then in 20 years ago, uh, most of the concrete was made so that 50 to 100 percentage of sand was natural sand. It's good because Ice Age has crushed it, rounded it, so the remaining grains are hard and durable, and so you get also hard and durable concrete. But the natural sand is limited resource, and there was a need to find out if we can use more uh, artificially crushed stone. Um, <clears throat> so I was working with concrete expert Hanna Järvenpä, and he made these experimental castings, mixing different types of natural sand and crushed stone with different grain sizes and so on. And then she measured um, the end result from about 200 experimental castings. And this phenomenon, what happens when the wet concrete hardens, it's so complex, we can't model this physical and chemical process exactly. But we can do these very simply, simple models just assuming that small changes in the properties what, uh, of these ingredients, if they, there's some small changes in there, there's small changes in the outcome. And so we were able to do this kind of um, statistical probabilistic model, which could predict these qualities. And based on what we were able to learn with this model, it was possible to give recommendations that enabled that it was uh, from 50 to 100 percentage of natural sand to go to less than 20 percentage, uh, about even to 10. And if using this specific model to take into account what type of natural sand you have, you could go even just 5 percentage of natural sand. The, the other example, so more recent one, a very recent uh, in collaboration with Sebastian Weber from Novartis, um, um, uh, where we want to estimate safe dosage uh, after for the, this immunosuppressant drug after liver transplant. So when the body gets new liver, it recognizes that it's not the original part and tries to reject it. And so this drug is given to cool down the immune system. Uh, so we need to have the concentration of the drug in a body that there's enough to cool down the system. So we want to have this drug concentration with certain range, not too little, not too much. Um, and then the drug is taken orally at some time. Uh, then it's in the gut. Then it diffuses from there to blood, and from blood to the interesting uh, organ. And then eventually kidney removes the drug from the blood. Uh, we can't model the human body cell by cell, and we can't model all these molecules. But we can model it, this simplifying, just take into account that we have the gut, blood, the interesting organ, and the kidney an unknown diffusion rates, an unknown rate for how quickly kidney removes this drug from the body. Um, we can take into account also body weight, which describes the volume of the patient, how much blood they have. And then it's possible to make drug tests with healthy adults. So give different dosages and then look how the concentration goes. And then we are able to do learn about these diffusion rates and how uh, the body weight also uh, influences this. And 
the great thing about these kind of diffusion models is that then it's enough that we have information only at certain time point. For example, when we are giving the drug at the same time, then taking a measurement, uh, and still we are able to predict very well how the drug concentration after taking the medicine goes up and then comes eventually down. And okay, then we need to give another do uh, dosage of the medicine. Um, and now we have, are able then to give this, uh, the, find out the safe dosage for adults. But we would like to use this also for children. We have the body weight in our model, so we could extrapolate from the adult model based on the weight, but small children are, uh, the children are not just small adults. So the kidney matters later in age. So the smallest children, the kidney is not removing the drug as fast as in adults. And we need to take in account this maturation effect. This drug has been given in some specific cases to children when there has been actual liver transplant. And so it's not possible to make the drug testing with healthy kids, but in these cases where they actually got the liver transplant, we uh, obtain some information. And then just from 18 children at different ages, and then using the adult model, the, uh, the uh, extrapolation and taking into account that the maturation effect has to be monotonically increasing, but unknown shape, we were able to also learn this unknown maturation effect uh, at different ages, and then we are able to give safe dosages also for children. And here's the figure for the concentration. That it's in, it, at the red points, we give drug, and we are able to model very well with this kind of diffusion model concentration at the different times. And then eventually, yes, we, we got the safe dosage also for children. There are, of course, endless, countless number of these kind of interesting projects. I'm not able to work and help on all of those. And instead, I most of the time, I'm developing tools for others to, to make these kind of models and so that they can uh, make these interesting models. So then, probabilistic. Um, we start with the expert information, like in the previous example, that we had these uh, gut, blood, organ, kidney, different diffusion rates. Uh, and then we transform that information to a mathematical model. There are uncertainties. We don't know beforehand for a new drug what these different diffusion rates are, but we can describe them with uncertainties with probabilities and probability distributions. Also probability distributions for functions. We don't know what is the, this maturation function, but we know something, like it's monotonic. Then we get data, which is numbers. And we can combine then this mathematical model with the numbers using Bayesian probability theory. And this is just the math. There's Combining the numbers to mathematical model, we get updated uncertainties. So we are then more certain what these diffusion rates are, and then we are more certain what would be the safe dosage for three, three year old uh, kid with certain weight. We get understandable models because we started from the expert information. We are building that information into the model which also uh, brings trust. And also that we have uncertainties there brings trust as if there would be a case where we would see that we don't know yet what would be the safe dosage for the smallest kids. We need to get more observations. We need to be more careful. Um, in theory, using the Bayesian probability theory is easy. If only we could do these calculations for this math exactly. Unfortunately, the, especially these integrals are so challenging that we, we um, are not able to do that. Um, but we can make these um, 
we can break these computations to smaller piece, to many, many smaller pieces, and give them to computer. And then we get to the computational part. So we need to be able to transform this mathematical model to computer. And we can do that using probabilistic programming language, which is designed for describing these probabilistic models. And then these probabilistic programming frameworks also include automated computation, automatic inference, uh, so that the user can focus on describing the model. Of course, we need to then take into account the limitations of computers. Even we are, when we are breaking these computations to smaller ones, this is still a limitation. Speed of computer, how many computations we can do in feasible time. Memory, limited memory, limited accuracy of representations of numbers, again, with the limited memory. Um, we have the automated computation, but it can't be foolproof. So we need diagnostics for this computation in France to check that whether it actually did work. Also, if it works, we need to check that we didn't make mistake when we built the model, or we did actually build something that's sensible. We didn't also kind of that did we give, get enough information from the expert, and if we did transform that correctly. We need to take into account limitations of already of these mathematical models. Are we able to learn certain things given these limitations? If we find out problems, we want to iterate and improve and eventually get to the better model. We need to, of course, then implement this in software. I'm part of the core development group for STAN, probabilistic programming framework and ecosystem, including also a uh, lot of documentation, educational material, and so on. I'm not doing this alone. So we have a lot of developers, a lot of contributors, more than 100,000 users, a lot of people building other tools on top of this. Here you can see kind of different topics I need to understand to work on this. I'm in computer science department, and my statistics and colleagues say that I clearly think like a computer scientist. Computational science is the one combining computer science and math. I use a lot of statistics. I also publish in statistic forums a lot. Bayesian probability theory is the one combining data and mathematical models. I use ideas from machine learning. I publish in machine learning forums. I'm part of the Finnish Center for Artificial Intelligence. Probabilistic approaches are uh, future of AI too. These tools can be used in data science, and I need to understand software engineering when I'm helping to implement these in software. When I talk about the impact on society, I want to again remind that I'm not doing all this alone. But these two, these examples illustrate why I'm excited to work on these tools, which helps others to do better modeling and quantification of uncertainty. So it's better, better possible to do better science, and these tools are already used in oh, many, many fields of science, in medicine, ecology, social science, and so on, and were, were used also um, so the group who won Nobel Prize in physics for gravitational waves also used STAN. Um, many companies are using, big companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google are using these to predict future to make, to be able to make better uh, decisions. Um, governments, uh, Australian government uh, used Dan in analysis of retirement saving system, and it's estimated that Australia will save 20 to 50 billion dollars in next 10 years because of this analysis. And so, uh, I'm happy that I'm able to contribute and have a kind of the eventual impact through the uh, people who are using these tools I have to develop. Thank you.